This is Dr. Cabin of I Associates of South Texas. I'm going to show you a case of a hypermature cataract uh, where we're doing a capsulorexis and the capsulorexis tears out. You can see here we start our cataract surgery with our typical superior side port incision using a 15 degree blade. We're going to make a main incision using a 2.8 millimeter keratome. I do this before I put a capsular dye in. In this case, we're using triptan blue, and that's uh, because it gives an easy evacuation of the dye using BSS on a 27 gauge cannula. So you can see we construct our uh, single plane incision uh, here and we're going to inject in the triptan blue in the side port and you can see this fully fills the anterior chamber and we'll stain the anterior capsule um, after we remove the excess triptan blue with balanced salt solution. You can see how easily this uh, is removed from the anterior chamber. We're going to fill the anterior chamber fully with a dispersive viscoelastic. In this case, we're using Endicote. This will protect the inside layer of the cornea, the endothelium, and also push back the anterior capsule to flatten it out. We're going to use our typical capsulorexis forcep here to make a puncture in the anterior capsule. And you can see that we start our capsulorexis. The capsulorexis is being completed and we can see it's torn peripherally. Uh, this is more than likely from the positive pressure inside the cataract contents pushing that capsulorexis peripherally. At this point we can refill the anterior chamber with a dispersed viscoelastic or in this case I try to unfold and perform a Littles procedure. Uh, that's to bring the capsulorexis back to the uh, center of the capsule. In this case, I decided that the capsular tear has already gone peripherally, and at this point we use a cystotome to convert the capsulorexis inferiorly to a can-opener capsulotomy. This is what we typically use with extra capsular cataract surgery. Uh, and it's easily done with this 27 gauge bent needle cystotome. We free that area of the capsule rexus to the center of the eye and remove the anterior capsule. At this point, we are going to proceed with hydrodissection done gently to uh, see if we can free up the nuclear contents, um, injecting balanced salt solution underneath the anterior capsule shows that the lens is prolapsing anteriorly and at this point I decide to proceed with a supracapsular removal of the lens nucleus. You can see we've turned it to a vertical orientation and we're going to carousel the nucleus into our phacal multiplication handpiece um, using a second instrument and a high vacuum setting on our phacal emulsifier. You can see here the nucleus um, has been suspended uh, vertically with viscoelastic on the superior and inferior sides of the nucleus. We'll remove the uh, nucleus in a carousel fashion. You can see the nucleus is rotating onto the phacal emulsification tip and being removed very quickly in this supracapsular uh, cataract removal. Once the nucleus has been removed, we will address the cortical material. That's the soft surrounding uh, layer that is subcapsular. We remove a few free nuclear fragments uh, with phacal emulsification handpiece. And at this point, we decide to switch to the automated irrigation aspiration. We use a silicone tipped uh, irrigation aspiration handpiece, and uh, I find it more rewarding to take the cortical material away from the can opener part of the capsulotomy. Is this area, um, if there is a wraparound tear, you want to remove all the cortex in the area away from that radial tear. Um, so we're going to remove the cortex on the superior part of the capsular bag and we will then approach the 
subcapsular area in the area of the radial tear. We use our automated irrigation aspiration handpiece uh, to remove the inferior cortex, taking care not to grab the anterior capsular tags of a can opener capsulorexis, as this can make the can opener capsulorexis tear posteriorly along one of the weak points of the capsulotomy. We're going to fill the capsular bag with a cohesive viscoelastic, and as this is a intact can opener capsulotomy, we're going to inject the three-piece silicon lens into the capsular bag. We placed three-piece lenses in the capsular bag often when we did extra capsular cataract extraction. I don't think a can opener capsulotomy is a contraindication to this. We inject in the silicone three-piece LI61AO into the capsular bag and it easily centers and at this point we are going to remove the residual viscoelastic. In this case it is helon. And any cortical material that remains in the anterior chamber. We will now stromally hydrate the wound. We take care as we remove the irrigation aspiration handpiece to keep the anterior chamber full by injecting BFS through the side port incision so there's not a collapse of the capsular bag. We're going to stromally hydrate the clear corneal wound with the 27 gauge cannula as well as the side port incision. This will provide a good seal that should be leak free. We check the intraocular pressure and fill with some balanced salt solution. And this completes the case. Thank you for your attention. This is Dr. Kavanaugh of Associates in South Texas.